a really great drama, and it just has disabled characters in it. That's the next frontier. Ben Mankiewicz, thanks for joining us on TCM and more of July's Stars of the Month. Throughout July, instead of a single star, we have featured the films of multiple actors, the only condition being they had to do some of their best work during the 1970s, the era we're featuring every Friday this month. We begin tonight with Robert Redford. Redford burst onto the Hollywood scene in the 1960s, most significantly co-starring with Jane Fonda and Barefoot in the Park from 1967 movie that made him a star, and with Paul Newman and Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid two years later. That picture made him a superstar. Redford then proceeded to cover all the bases in the 70s. Just a few highlights from his dozen films released that decade. He solidified his matinee idol status in The Way We Were, opposite Barbara Streisand. He recaptured his comedy chemistry with his pal Paul Newman in The Sting, earning his only Best Actor Oscar nomination. He was the definitive, reluctant CIA operative in Sidney Pollack's Three Days at the Condor, opposite Faye Dunaway, and he was instrumental in making the most important journalism picture of all time, All the President's Men from 1976, co-starring Dustin Hoffman. 1972, Redford made a personal favorite of his, Jeremiah Johnson, a tribute to the Western wilderness. That same year came another film about one of his driving interests, American politics, and it is our next movie. Along with John Ford's 1958 film, The Last Hurrah, this is one of the two most accurate movie depictions of what it's like inside a political campaign from 1972, The Candidate. This is a sensational movie if you love politics or I think if you hate it, maybe it's not for those who don't care. It's at times satirical, at others incisive. Redford plays a politically cynical son of a former California governor, yet he's idealistic enough to run to the United States Senate against a well-established, well-funded incumbent. He agrees to run on one condition, that he be allowed to speak his mind without the restrictions typically placed on candidates. His candor ends up taking the campaign in an unanticipated direction. The Oscar-winning screenplay by Jeremy Larner was based on Larner's book about his stint as Eugene McCarthy's speechwriter during McCarthy's insurgent 1968 presidential campaign. After watching the entire 68 campaign unfold on television, Redford was struck by its phoniness. He thought Larner's book was the perfect catalyst for a movie about an honest politician caught in the vortex of empty slogans and media pander. As an uncredited executive producer, Redford hired Michael Ritchie to direct and respond to what has been described as Ritchie's messy realism. The terrific cast includes Peter Boyle, Melvin Douglas, and cameos from several politicians at the time, including George McGovern, who had become the Democratic nominee for president in 1972. There's also a cameo from Redford's friend and former leading lady, Natalie Wood. 1972. 